Look at this bombshell. 9-11 hackers or hijackers were CIA recruits. Ah. Uh, what? Ca caller me. Push me over with a feather. <laughs> At least two of the 9-11 hijackers had been recruited into a joint CIA-Saudi intelligence operation that was covered up at the highest level, according to a new court filing, and this comes from the Gray Zone, Kit Clarenberg. A newly released court filing raises grave questions about the relationship between Alex Station and a CIA unit set up to track AI Al-Qaeda, Chief Osama bin Laden, and his associates, and two... 9-11 hijackers leading up to the attacks, which was subject to a cover-up at the highest levels of the FBI. Obtained by Spy Talk, the f filing is a 21-page declaration by Don Canestero, a lead investigator for the Office of Military Commissions, the legal body overseeing the cases of 9-11 defendants. It summarizes classified government discovery disclosures and private interviews he conducted with anonymous high-ranking CIA and FBI officials. Many agents who spoke to Canestero headed up Operation Encore the Bureau's aborted, long-running probe into Saudi's government's connections to the 9-11 attack. Despite conducting multiple lengthy interviews with a range of witnesses, producing hundreds of pages of evidence, formally investigating several Saudi officials, and launching a grand jury to probe a Riyadh-run U.S.-based support network for the hijackers, Encore was abruptly terminated in 2016. This was purportedly due to a Byzantine intra-FBI bust-up over investigative methods. When originally released in 2021 on the office's public court's docket, every part of the document was redacted except an unclassified marking. Given its explosive contents, it is not difficult to see why. As Canestraro's investigation concluded, at least two 9-11 hijackers had been recruited, either knowingly or unknowingly, into a joint CIA-Saudi intelligence operation, which may have gone awry. Let me bring in Max Blumenthal from the gray zone. So, first of all, it doesn't surprise me. Secondly, what do you make of this? It's, it's, there, there, there's more to make of it than we even have before us. We can only draw conclusions based on the available information but this is new these are these are new testimonies to me and they're testimonies about something that i wrote about in my book the management of savagery has been written about by other journalists was on the record for years which is that in 1999 uh i guess it was january 5th and through 8th 2000 there was an al-qaeda summit in Kuala Lumpur and all the big wigs were there. And there were also these two cats from Saudi Arabia, um, no Khalid al Midhar and Nawaf al Hazmi. And they had their in, in their hotel room while they were at the meeting, CIA agents busted into their room, photographed their passports, shot, saw that they had multi-entry visas to the U S and then proceeded to allow them to sail into the U.S., to fly into the U.S. directly into L.A. International Airport, get off the plane without any additional screening, any screening, and did not tell the FBI's um, unit that had been set up to track al-Qaeda that they were even in the country. When they got off the plane, they were met by someone named Omar al-Bayoumi, who is a Saudi national as well, who is said to be an employee of the Civil Aviation Authority of Saudi Arabia. He was a ghost employee. What he really was was a Saudi intelligence agent. And he took these two guys who didn't speak a word of English, got them apartments, paid for their lease, and helped make sure that they got to their flight lessons in San Diego. And the FBI wasn't even told that they were in the country until they were in the final stages of executing the day of the planes operation, which was the 9-11 operation. A law enforcement action was never enacted against these two would-be hijackers. And it was because the CIA had covered up their presence and refused to tell 
the FBI. And now we learn through Don Conestraro's filing after he interviewed several agents who participated in Operation Encore, which was uh, the aborted long running probe into Saudi connections to the 9-11 attacks. We learn that these two hijackers had probably been recruited or had certainly been recruited by the CIA, whether they knew it or not, in order to give the CIA access to Al Qaeda. This is what uh, one of the agents, Conestraro, said. He said, um, well, I had it in front of me a second ago, but he essentially said um, what I told you. Uh, here it is that the contact between Omar Bayoumi, this Saudi guy who picked them up at the airport, who was a Saudi intelligence agent, was done at the behest of the CIA through the Saudi intelligence service. And the explicit purpose of the CIA group that was set up uh, with total latitude to recruit agents, it was called Alex Station, was to recruit Al-Hazmi and Al-Midhar via a liaison relationship with Riyadh's general intelligence directorate. So here we have two 9-11 hijackers enjoying a direct relationship with the CIA and the Saudi intelligence services. Is, and, is, uh, so chilling. you you go ahead, Kurt. Is this like a Fast and Furious, but with terrorists instead of guns? Um, it seems like yeah, Max box is, knives instead of guns. It seems <laughs> it seems like Max is coming perilously close to questioning the official 9-11 <laughs> narrative as to what exactly took place on 9-11. Now, even Chomsky uh, is a good boy when it comes to 9-11. And he says, you're crazy, Max, if you think anything nefarious went on except exactly what they told you on MSNBC, CNN. Yeah, I mean, the question is, did the CIA cover up the presence of these assets in order to allow the attack to proceed because it would allow for wider latitude and allow them to achieve operational goals inside the Middle East, basically the war on terror? Or did they just cover it up because they didn't think such an attack would ever take place and that they want that this was their Hail Mary pass at gaining access into the inner circle of Al Qaeda because these were characters who had access to Al Qaeda. And, you know, at the time when this was taking place, the system was bl blinking red. That's what the 9 11 official report says. Um, and, you know, Paul Wolfowitz gave a speech uh, about a potential new Pearl Harbor as uh, in, in the months before 9-11 and said only something like that would catalyze the U.S. into being able to um, expand its wars in the Middle East. So they're were, there were all, you know, George W. Bush, the presidential daily briefing that he was given just like a, a month before 9-11, and he threw it in the trash after 15 minutes. The title was Bin Laden Determined to Strike Inside the U.S. So what is the real story here? I don't know what the real story is. I can only speculate, but we keep gaining more and more concrete details to point to uh, serious malfeasance, if not straight up criminality at the highest levels of the CIA, along with the massive cover up of this entire uh, relationship with two 9-11 hijackers. And as Kit points out, as Kit Clarenberg points out in this article, the key figures in Alex Station were all promoted. <laughs> Of course they were. Of, yeah, of course. course they were. So um, I don't think we'll ever really know what happened with that 9-11. Maybe not for another 50 years. Uh, even then, who knows? Will we, will we know? Well, by then, will we know how the next pandemic happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't believe anything, and you shouldn't. You're a sucker if you believe the government's official position on anything. And uh, apparently that's a good enough story for Chomsky. <laughs> he was too busy trying to uh, separate the unvaccinated uh, to, to starve so before so he couldn't look into 9-11. He didn't at least, because I even heard on breaking points, because that FOIA thing came out about how, uh, how much the Saudis were involved in 9-11, like some member of the Saudi royal family, and they covered that up. That's mm -hmm. like open i thought that's like kind of open news now so chomsky doesn't even think that you tell me what chomsky thinks and what he does and what it's it's certainly not going to be anything that's going to upset this apple cart but um 
Uh, you're not allowed to question anything. You're not allowed to question the, the origin of the virus. You're not allowed to question 9-11. You're not allowed to question why Barack Obama flew to Saudi Arabia after they passed the law. Then they passed a law, Max, that made it okay to sue Saudi Arabia over 9-11, and then Barack Obama had to literally get on a plane and fly to Saudi Arabia to calm them down? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I think uh, lawsuits by the 9-11 families were nixed. In order to keep the relationship going, and I mean the relationship's completely cratered now, and you can see that U.S. is in total panic. Yes, um, yes, the, uh, they're, the, they're 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 selling oil <clears throat> to China in in Yuan. So, you know, you can see how Saudi Arabia can kind of have the U.S. by the balls, and <laughs> one of the things they would hate to have happen is for the full truth about 9/11 to come out. But I think it's pretty obvious that Saudi intelligence was involved. Uh, I mean, these guys, Al Hazmi and Midhar, they were being Al Midhar, they were being just shepherded around LA by a Saudi intelligence agent and visiting Saudi funded mosques and going to Saudi cultural events. I mean, they were Saudi citizens. But I, I, I feel like this also reinforces the idea that Al Qaeda, which was created out of the CIA operation in Afghanistan, yep. The covert operation in Afghanistan, Operation Cyclone, which was then the most expensive CIA operation in history, uh, that they were behind that they were in behind the 9-11 attacks. Um, and I mean, if I were Dick Cheney and I wanted to false flag it like in the ultimate false flag possible, I would have made all the hijackers Iraqi. Huh. Or, yeah, or right. That's what I always said. It's like, why wouldn't you just make frame all Iraqi if we're trying to go to Iraq? I guess harder to get Iraqis. It turns out you don't have to frame them. Everybody just went along with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, right. This, that makes this sense. All, this all connects to like to, to, to how we how we digest media and information about national security. It all it all comes through leaks. It's all filtered through the intelligence services and the national security state. And then you have all these stenographers at the legacy corporate media publications who function as their little uh, mega, they function as their collective megaphone. And our understanding of 9-11 is influenced heavily by what the would-be hijackers who were captured and those involved who had been, you know, in, in Al-Qaeda said while they were being tortured, while they were under extreme duress. And then, you know, their torturers would go and filter that information through the media and through the government officials back to the public. So one of the torturers, the figures who oversaw the torture of uh, figures connected to the 9-11 operation was Alfredo Francis Bukowski, who succeeded Richard Blee, who was the original director of Alex Station, the CIA unit that recruited these two 9-11 hijackers. You understand what I'm saying here? So the person who extracted the confessions and then helped form the narrative of the 9-11 attacks was a director of the group that recruited future 9-11 hijackers. So how can we trust that's anything? Right. Jesus Christ. I mean, Christ. That, that's what the Senate Intelligence Committee report is based on. It's like putting Fauci in charge of the, the Wuhan leak. <laughs> Right, the guy, the guy who did, who invented it. Let's put him in charge. Are of you it. saying a raccoon dog did nine eleven? <laughs> <laughs> a raccoon dog. Oh man. Well, um, maybe we'll get the, the, the maybe the truth of all this will come out to the American people uh, so at some point because America is losing its dominance in the world. So we'll see what happens. I don't know if you know about this stuff. <laughs> It's field of greens. Do you do, you do this stuff? So I, I'm, you know, you're supposed to get four to six servings of fruit and vegetables a day, which I don't. I get maybe one. Uh, so they, so if you do this stuff, it comes with a scooper, and then you put it in your. Uh, it's not a. It's called a superfood because it's real food. It's real. It's organic, and it's a superfood. It's not a supplement. It's like food, and they somehow they, it's real food, and then they turn it into a powder like this, and you take the scooper. And you put it in a glass of water or milk or whatever you want. I put it in water, and I like how it tastes, actually. And uh, it's supposed to be great for you. Uh, I don't eat like I'm supposed to, uh, and I'm, this is supposed to help. So this is called, well, this is it here. So if you're into that stuff, it's called Field of Greens. 
And where do they go? They go fieldofgreens.com, right? So, and then use promo code Jimmy and you get 15% off of your first order. Or if you use promo code Jimmy, you can get 10% off of a subscription, which means, I guess, a recurring order. So fieldofgreens.com, use promo code Jimmy, get 15% off from a one-time purchase or 10% off. So this that's the thing about this. It's all organic. It's all real food. It's not a supplement. And uh, it's supposed to help you get, uh, it's a superfood. That's what they call it because it's real. Okay, so uh, I'm tr- I'll let you know how it goes for me. I'm taking it. I like how it tastes. They have different flavors too. So you can get it flavored if you want. This is the original that I'd use. And to me, it tastes like a cross between iced tea and fresh cut grass, but in the best way possible, right? Uh, so go to fieldofgreens.com, promo code Jimmy, 15% off or 10% off a subscription. And that helps support the show. Thank you. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special, COVID Lies Are Funny. <laughs> <laughs> 